financial things. Yeah. It's always that when you are given a question, you need to do at recognition, at disposal, at year end, and at disposal. Is no, it it's the question that will inform you what you are supposed to do. Okay. So if, for instance, the question requires that uh, you prepare or you state, so always the question will be how should it be presented in the financial statement for the, for a certain year ended. Okay, then you do as then you do as, as at that year ended. Okay. So that means you will do the recognition, then the year ended, the movement will be recognized. Okay. So let's look at this question. Can PLC issues $10,001 ordinary shares? Can PLC issues $10,001 ordinary shares for cash consideration of $2.5 per share? Can limited issues $10,001 ordinary shares for cash consideration of $2.5 per share? The issue costs are thousand dollars. The issue costs are thousand dollars. Required. Explain and illustrate how the above. Explain and illustrate how the above should be treated accounted for in the financial statement of the company. Explain and illustrate how the above should be accounted for in the financial statements. So, one of the things that you need to understand is, we mentioned that when it comes to financial instruments, there are going to be two things financial assets and financial liability. But when the question is presented to us, how do we know that this is a financial asset questions question or this is a financial instrument question? The standard requires that if the contract, because remember we said a financial instrument, we recognize when we enter into the contract. If the contract requires that the company is obliged or is under obligation to repay the finance they are raising, then it becomes what? A financial liability. So if there is no terms in the contract and the company is not under any obligation to repay, then we will recognize that what? As a financial asset. So usually, financial instruments comes into the picture because of the issue about what? Finance. We are looking for money. So if we are looking for money, we either issue shares or we issue bond. If we wish issue shares and it is share that will be redeemed or will be uh, repurchased at a future date, then that is not a financial asset. It will become what? A financial liability. So even though it is a share, it will be a liability because we will be under obligation to, to, to repay. So if you look at this question, what do you think it's about? Do you think it should be an, an equity instrument or a, a, a liability instrument, in your opinion? Certainly, financial assets be like an equity. It will be under financial liability. Why is, will it be under financial liability? Is there anything in the question that suggests that we will be repaying or repurchasing the loan, the shares? Nothing, right? So this will be classified as an equity instrument. Because the Ken PLC or the company is not under any obligation to repay. So that is the key thing. If there is a clause, the statement in the question that we need to repay the money, then it becomes a financial liability. But if you are not going to repay, it becomes a financial equity or asset. Now, so since this is a financial asset, it has to be accounted for in the financial statement. And then all issue costs. 
So issue costs relating to the uh, issue of the equity instrument will be written off against the share premium. So we are going to recognize it as a financial equity or financial equity instrument. Then all issue costs will be written off against what? The share premium. So if we go to the question, we are told that the company paid or issued shares of 10,000. And so double entry. So general entry. We're going to be debiting our cash book with the shares that we had. So a cash of. Now, what will be the cash that we'll be receiving from the issue of the shares? 2.5 times. Mm -hmm. 2.5 times 10,000. Okay. 2.5 times 10,000. And that will be what? 25,000. But is that what we will be receiving as a company? No. We will receive only 24,000. Why? Because of the issue cost of what? $1,000. So we debit our cash book with the $24,000. Then, it is issue of share. So we're going to credit what? Equity or share capital. How much will go to the share capital? How much will go to the share capital? The shares are quoted at what? $1 each. So that one dollar will go there. So ten thousand dollars goes into the share capital. Then the profit on the issue of shares goes to share premium. So the share premium is going to be carrying fourteen thousand. Now, share premium would have been one point five times ten thousand, which is fifteen thousand, but. Remember the statement we made up here. Issue cost will be written off against what? Share premium. So we will deduct the issue cost of 1,000. And that will give us the 14,000. So that is the idea about this transaction. That's the idea about this transaction. So the examiner may put you in a spot, give you a scenario, and will ask you how it will be recognized. Or it will be part of uh, the notes to the company. You are preparing consolidated financial statement. And then you see a one-line item like this. So if it is a one-line item like this, then all other group cash flow statements, there can be something like this. So meaning, this is what will go to the share capital, this is what will go to the share premium, and certainly the thousand will go to the income statement as the expenses for the year. So that is the Thing we need to understand about this question. Very simple and straight. Now, as I rightly mentioned, assuming this was a redeemable shares, then we won't take it to the share capital, rather we will take it to what? Liability, because it will become a loan note. So that is the idea about this. Let's take it a step, a step further with another example. Broad Limited raises finance. Broad Limited raises finance by issuing twenty thousand six percent four year loan notes. Broad raises finance by issuing twenty thousand dollars six percent four year loan notes on the first day of the current accounting period on the first day of the current accounting period the loan notes are issued at a discount of 10 percent the loan notes are issued at a discount of 10 percent and will be redeemed after three years the loan notes are issued at a discount of 
and will be redeemed after three years at a premium of $1,015. At a premium of $1,015. The effective rate of interest is 12%. The effective rate of interest is 12%. And issue costs were $1,000. And issue costs were $1,000. Required. Explain and illustrate how the above will be accounted for. Explain and illustrate how the above will be accounted for. In the financial statement of Broad Limited. In the financial statement of Broad Limited. So this is a second scenario. Call Broad Limited. And they are again raising finance. But what is in here? How do we classify this kind of finance? Is it equity instrument or a liability instrument? Liability instrument. Why? The it will be redeemed after three years. So they are under obligation to what? Repay. Repay. Right. So what it means is that this transaction will be uh, classified as a liability instrument and will always be carried at cost and fair value through profit or loss. So we will initially measure it at the fair value or the cost then we look at it at the fair value. Now, how do we find out the initial cost of this liability instrument? How do we do that? To do that, we are going to take into consideration the statement that the examiner has made. One, we are told that the thing is issued at what? A discount. Two, we are told that there is an issue cost. So we need to take all of that into consideration when we are recognizing the initial cost of what? The liability to be recognized. So how do we go, do, go that? First, we will bring the cash received. So the cash received is usually going to be the nominal value of the loan. So what is the nominal value of the loan? We are told it is $20,000. Then from this, we will list the discount. What was the discount? The discount 10%. was 10%. So 10% of the 20,000, 2,000. We will list that and get 18,000. Then we will list the issue cost. Which is also thousand. Now we will get the initial recognition of the financial liability. Which is seventeen thousand dollars. So that is the first step in determining the initial value of the financial liability. At the end, this is a financial liability on which we will be paying interest every year. So in this question, it was just blank. We were not told which particular year. So what I'm going to do is to present the whole thing. Then we will point out at every stage what we would have done if the examiner had said we should present it at a certain stage. So we're going to carry this at the amortized cost and present our formula like this or pro formula like this. So we're going to have the opening balance. We will put in place the interest. 
we will put in place the cash that will be paid, and then we will get a closing balance. Now, the cash that will be paid will be based on the coupon rate of the loan that has been issued. What was the coupon rate of the loan issued? 12%. No. Coupon rate. That was the effective rate. Yes. 12%. The 12% was the effective rate. Yes. But the coupon rate is the rate that we will use to pay the interest, which is 6%. Can you see that? 20,000, 6%, four years. four years. So that becomes the interest rate that we'll be paying. So we will use the effective rate to calculate our interest, then we'll use the coupon rate to know the cash that will be paid every year. Then we will start with the year one. With the year one, we're going to carry this up, 17,000. So let's get 12% of 17,000. 2040. Now the interest will be added to the opening balance and then the cash that will be paid. Now this will be 6% on the 20,000. So 6% of 20,000. Thousand two hundred. That will be subtracted. So let's do the arithmetic. That will give us the closing at the end of year one. 17,000. 17,840. That closing in year one becomes opening, opening in year two. 17,840. Then we get 12% of that. 2141. 2141. The cash paid will still be the same. So let's get a closing. Then we come to the third year. 12% of that. 2254. So let's get a final answer there. 19825. So that is going to come here. We get 12% of that. Two, three, zero. Now, the cash that will be paid at the end of the four years will include both the uh, interest, 1, 200, and how will the debt be redeemed from the question? It will be redeemed at a premium of 1,015. So on redemption, we will pay 21 and 15. Do you agree? 21 and 15. That is the main nominal value, 20,000, plus the premium of 1,015, okay. and then the interest for that year. Okay. Okay. So now, when you do the arithmetic, you should get zero here. There shouldn't be anything at the end of the year, because we will close it up, and that will be all for it. Finance cost here. about the interest that we are going to be charging in the income statement. 
Then this will go into what? The balance sheet as the balance outstanding for the non-current assets in that case. Then, this is the interest we charge, but this is the interest we are actually going to be what? Be paying. So, the difference between this will be added back to this figure in the uh, balance sheet. Because this is what we've charged, this is what we are paying. But, the reason why the difference will not be factored into in the balance sheet is that, one, this total finance cost actually includes the following. It includes the interest payment, which is 1,002 every year times 4. What do we get? 2,800. Or 4,800. Then the discount that we gave. What was the discount? 10%. 10%, which was 2,000. Then the issue cost. How much was our issue cost? 1,000. 1,000. Then the premium, redemption of premium. Premium we are paying on redemption. 10 and what? 15. When you sum this up, it should give you the same answer. That is it. So, this you are paying for each year actually includes part of this, part of this, so you are actually spreading everything over. So, you charge the whole thing in the income statement for that year, and then what? Take this to the balance sheet under non-carrier liability. But in the income statement, yes. The amount that goes into the income statement is the amount that is actually the full amount that is actually paid in that particular financial year. Correct. So if we are charging 2141 in the financial statement for that particular year, and we are not paying all, but we are charging the whole thing there. So this is it. The reason why we need to do that is that this discount is an expenses. Mm -hmm. It has to be spread over the life of the asset. This issue cost, the same thing, it has to be written off, right? Then this premium we are paying will also have to be written off. So it is those pieces being written off which adds up to the actual thing we are paying to be charged in the income statement. Is the picture clear now? So that is how it is. So this is how we would present our financial liability in the, in the books of the company. Right, so the next thing to look at is compound financial instrument. So, the two examples we've considered so far, one was about equity and the other was about liabilities. These were different. But there are times when there are what we call compound financial instruments. What are compound financial instruments? Compound financial instruments are simply the financial instruments that have the characteristics of both what? Equity and liability. So any financial instrument that has the characteristics of both equity and liability is, financial is a compound financial instrument. Example. Example of a compound financial instrument is where a company issues convertible loan or convertible loan notes. Now, convertible loan notes are the loan notes that give what? Uh, the holders an option to convert the shares into what? Sorry, the loan into shares. Now, the fact that we have issued a convertible loan note does not mean they will convert. However, the standard says that as far as we have issued a convertible loan note, that means there is an equity component. So, at recognition, when we are uh, on initial recognition, when we issue a convertible loan note, the double entry is 
money is coming into the business, so we're going to be debiting cash. But we need to credit equity and at the same time credit liability. So the question now is, how do we split this convertible loan, this value, into the equity component and the liability component? The splitting of the convertible loan note into the equity component and the liability components, components can be done using the following steps. Step one. The first step is to calculate the debt component. You calculate the debt component. So how do you calculate the debt component? Simple. The debt component is calculated by finding the present value of future cash flows present values of future cash flows of the instrument of the instrument using the current interest rate of similar bonds without conversion rights. So that is a concept. That's a concept. So to calculate the debt component, we are going to discount the cash flows on the bond. But the interest rate we're going to be using here, or the coupon rate, or the discount rate will be what? The interest rate of similar bonds without the option to convert. This present value thing gives us the debt component. That's the first step. Second step is to calculate the equity component. To calculate the equity component, we simply subtract the debt components calculated in step one from the proceeds that we got from the issue of the bond. So, the equity component will be equal to proceeds from issue minus the debt component. Then, as we saw in the first example and the second example, Almost always, when a company is issuing financial instruments, there is what we call the transaction cost or the issue cost. So how do we treat the transaction cost or the issue cost? Any transaction cost that is incurred is apportioned. So issue cost is apportioned to the equity and then what? The debt using their values obtained. So we apportion to the equity and debt using the value, the values obtained in one and two. So these are the three steps and this is a concept that you have to understand when you are treating compound financial instrument. So one, anytime there is a convertible loan note issues, know that it is a financial instrument. But that financial instrument has to be split into the equity component or the liability company. We don't care whether they will convert or not. All we know is we have issued a convertible loan note. Hence, it must have an equity component and a liability so based on this understanding, let's look at a simple scenario on how we can present this and follow these three steps and present compound financial instruments. So example, on 1st January 2016, 
on 1st January 2016, NAMS Gold PLC issued 50 million three-year convertible bond at par. NAMS Gold PLC issued 50 million dollars three-year convertible bond at par. Three-year convertible bond at par. With the following terms, at par with the following terms. One, issue cost amounted to $50,000. Issue cost amounted to $50,000. It is $50,000. $500,000. Next. The coupon rate is 10% payable annually in arrears. Payable coupon rate is 10% payable annually in arrears on 31st December. On 31st December. Next. Bondholders may opt for conversion. Bondholders may opt for conversion. Bondholders may opt for conversion. The terms of the conversion are two 25 cents shares. The terms of the conversion are two 25 cent shares for every one dollar owed to the bondholder. For every one dollar owed to the bondholder. For every one dollar owed to the bondholder on 1st June 2018. On 1st June 2018. 2.50 cent shares for every one dollar owed to each bondholder on 1st June 2018. Next. Bonds issued by similar companies without any conversion rights. Bond issued by similar companies without any conversion rights, currently bears interest at 15%. Currently bears interest at 15%. Currently bears interest at 15%. Next, the impact of the issue cost, the impact of the issue cost, is to increase the effective interest rate to the impact of the issue cost is to increase the effective interest rate to 15.425 percent. Required. How should bond how should the bond be accounted for by NAMS Gold PLC? How should a bond be accounted for by NAMS Gold PLC? Assuming A, the bondholders opt for conversion. Assuming A, the bondholders opt for conversion. B, the bondholders opt for cash. Right. So, this is a typical compound financial instrument. And so we put the names of the name of the company down, Nams Gold PLC. And we are supposed to account for this, or how should it be accounted for if one they opt for conversion, and then two, if they opt for cash. So, we need to go through the steps that we established. One, we need to determine, because this is a compound financial instrument, it has to be separated into its components. So, the first step is to calculate the debt component. And how do we say we calculate the debt component? Present value of future cash flows, discounting at what? The interest rate of similar bonds without what? The conversion rate. Right. So let's look at it. So we're going to put a year ended up. 
We're going to put cash flow here. And we're going to put the discount factor here. And we're going to hit present value here. Did I give you this discount factor table? Have I given you this discount factor table? Even in corporate reporting, you don't need that. You, know, but you don't need it. No. Let me just see. So, it is a three year, isn't it? Yeah. So, from 2018, 2019, and everybody, 2020. So, 2018, 2019, 2020. So, how do we get a cash flow? The discount rate will be the rate of similar bonds. What is the rate of similar bonds in the question? The year is not the from 2016. No, it's, I said 18. First January 2018. The yes, the the bond, the coupon rate for similar bonds. Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. So that will become the discount factor. The cash flows we bring here will be using what the coupon rate on the bond, which is what ten percent. Good. So, we go, 2018, 10% of the bond. How much was the bond? 50, 000, 50 million, right? So, we're going to tell the examiner we are working in thousands so that we can reduce the number of zeros we write. So, 2018, 2019, 2020. So, 10% of 50,000. 5,000. Every year, how much are we going to be paying? The discount rate. So this is going to be 1 over 1.15. Okay? You remember that? So we multiply. 4, 3, 4, 4, 3, 4, 9. 4, 3, 4, 9. 4, 3, 4, 8. 4, 3, 4, 8. To the nearest thousand, right? Yes. 2019, the same money will come. This time, 1.15 exponent 2. Three seven eight one. Three seven eight one. In the 20th, <laughs> in the third year, what will happen? Redemption or something. We don't know, but then it will be redeemed. And so we will pay the 5,000 plus the redemption, which is going to be 55,000. Are you getting the picture? So 1 over 1.15 exponent 3. So we sum it up, that becomes the debt component. Which is the present value of the cash flows? 44292. So that is the debt component. Mm -hmm. So we will bring the proceeds. Mm -hmm. How much was the proceeds? 50,000. 50, the difference between that Five. will give us. Be like this, yes. that becomes the equity component. Sounds good. So this is how we do the as the splits. Now there is an issue cost. If there were no issue cost and Kaya and Jenshin, all we would do is debit our cash fifty thousand, credit equity five seven no eight. And then credit liability about this bond, 44292. If there were no issue cost. But because there is an issue cost, we need to share it among them so that everybody will have their own. And I told you that we are portion using their balance. Yes. So we're going to put the debt here. We'll put the equity up. And then we'll put total here. And we are still working in three zeros up. So let's bring the proceeds. Total proceeds was 50,000, which was splitted into 44,292 for debt, 
and then 5,708 for equity. Then we will less the issue cost. How much was the issue cost? 500,000, right? Yes. So we share it. So 44292 divided by 50,000 times 500. 443. 443. You take it out. Okay, so the final answer here. Okay, four, yeah. Three, eight. Four, three, eight, four, nine. Four, nine. will be the issue cost, sorry, the issue here, and then also we will deal with what? The issue cost. So you realize that with the issue cost, what are we doing? We are debiting equity, that is why we subtracted with what? 57, and we are crediting, sorry, still debiting the liability, that's why again we subtracted 443, but we are crediting the cash. So we are losing money of what? 500. The total. Yeah. We have to subtract the 500. Yeah, we have to subtract. So it becomes 49. 500. Sounds good. This is how it is. Now, when we finish like this about the initial recognition, the debt has to be carried at amortized cost. So we need to carry the debt at amortized cost and find out the value of the debt as at the end of 2020. Then based on that, we can now answer the question about what will happen if they should convert or what will happen if they should uh, redeem or take their money out. So put it down and then let's continue. Right, so subsequent measurements. As I mentioned, the liability would have to be carried at amortized cost when we are talking about subsequent measurements. So we put our pro forma up. The opening balance, we bring the interest, cash paid, and then out, the closing balance. But be careful here. The interest we are bringing here is the odds, effective interest rate. So what was the effective interest rate given to us? 15.1 Okay, 425 So that is the effective interest rate That's what we're going to be using The cash paid will still be based on the coupon rate of what? 10% So no problem about that Now, you need to understand why this arrangement was done We were told in the question that The payment for the interest is done at the end of the year that is why we will add interest before we subtract. But assuming we were told it's at the beginning of the year, then this would have come before this will come. So three years. Let's go to 2018. What was the balance we got for the liability? After we deducted the issue cost. 43849. 43849. So let's get 15.452% of that. 5, 2, 4, 2, 5. Or 4, 2, 5. Of 4, 3, 8, 4, 4 9. 9, yeah. 6, 7, 6, 4. 6, 7, 6, 4. Cash paid will still be 5,000. No P because 10% of the 50,000, right? The cash that was brought. So now when we do the arithmetic, closing balance. Then 2019, this closing becomes opening. So we get 15.452% of that. 
7036 still minus 5,000. So what do we have? So 15.5 percent, 5,000. Seven three four, seven three five zero. Seven three five zero. Five zero point what? No, it's seven three four nine point okay. eight. Okay. So, so seven three five, five zero. zero. Arithmetic. Let's get it closing finally. Four nine 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 nine. So that means approximation said it would have been fifty thousand. Uh, yeah. So what does that mean? This is where we are at. So the carrying amount at or as at first Jane 2021 of the liability is how much? 50,000. 50, but what about our equity? Our equity is still that figure we had because that one will not change. 5651. 5651. Five, Give it as a total of 5. Five six five one. Am I right? Five five six five one. Yes. Yeah. So what happens now? We are finished with subsequent measurements. Then the examiner said, "What will happen on convention?" So I, the first scenario was on convention. So when they convert, what is going to happen? So let's see what happens on convention. What was the policy for the convention in the question? We were told that they will get how many shares? 25 cents shares. 225 cents shares for every one. For every one dollar. So the number of shares that they will get will be 50 million times two shares, isn't it? Yeah. And that will give us what? 100 million shares. Then the value of the, of the shares that they will convert will be 100 million shares times the value which is 25 cents 0.25 dollars so what will be the value 25 million but look at something the value there is 25 million but what is the value of the bond in total right now 50 million no what is the value of the bond in total 55 55 so what does that mean? The difference becomes what we call share premium. It means we are making a profit when they convert. So the share premium will be this figure, 55, 651 minus 25,000. 30,651. 30,651. So this goes to the share so what is the double entry here? We have to de-recognize from the equity and then what? Re-recognize it. So we're going to be debiting the liability with how much? The figure there. So the equity will be what? Still 5.6. Five, six, five, five, now it is no more there. But we have to now recognize what has come. So we will credit share capital with how much? 25,000. And then credit if I say share premium. 30,651. So this is what happens on conversion. I hope you are getting the picture. Now, what happens if they don't convert and they redeem? So last thing. On redemption, that one is cheap. We don't have to think. Because on redemption, how much would they get? They would just get their 50000 So what do we do? We would debit the liability with $50,000 and credit our cash book. $50,000, period. That amount in the equity, the 5651, will be seen as undistributed reserves and will be carried still in the 
financial statement of the company and will be labeled as undistributed reserves. So nothing will be ha nothing will happen to that figure. It will still be in the uh, balance sheet of the financial statement as undistributed reserve. Meaning we can't pay dividend out of it. Every year we'll just be carrying it forward. We can't pay dividend out of it. So that is the idea about how we treat compound financial instruments. So in the example, a question like this can be presented for five months. Where the examiner, but maybe it will not be as much as this, but the examiner will just ask you on conversion what is going to be happening. So you must know what is happening. And then on redemption, what is happening. But the most important thing is, the treatment of this thing. When they don't convert and they redeem the money, it will be carried as undistributed reason. So if you have any questions, you put it in the comments box and I'll be answering all of them for you.